What's up, people? It's your boy Jatwa, and I'm here today with uh, a f two aircraft, well, not really aircraft, spacecraft, that are built strictly for one purpose. This is Jewel Diver. I also call this one the Sunflower for obvious reasons you'll see here in a few. But this aircraft is built with a crap ton of radiators as a primary test for my secondary craft, to tell you the truth. So this one is just a heat test. I want to see how well these radiators did and I was bouncing, uh, taking a look at the ablation uh, versus the, from the heat shields versus the radiators to see how much of the ablation would actually be used. So depending on how this test went, I could use or not use the heat shielding on the second test. I was really hoping the radiators would work out and it seemed to be doing the trick initially. So let's take a look and see how well this did. As you can see here, the radiators are doing a pretty good job. The ablators are, it's wearing down, but not as much as I would think it would diving into Jewel. Based on some of my uh, historic tests, this is actually doing far better. Uh, sometimes jumping into Jewel, I've used two heat shields in the front but this one is doing exceedingly well as far as keeping the heat off the craft now in there is a it's a service bay and in that service bay there is the main core for my satellite and also is a SAS RTGs I believe it's four RTGs and two batteries that is all just doing one thing, keeping this aircraft going <laughs> directly into prograde. So we are diving, diving straight down into uh, Jewel and getting a bunch of screenshots and beautiful <laughs> scenes as we go. That one right there is one of my particular favorites. And here we're, we are actually breaking through the upper atmosphere. And you can see the center of it glowing yellow. Extremely hot, but it is diving straight down. And as we break all the way through, dropping under th Mach 3, you see our effects starting to go away. And we are just about in the safe zone. Everything from here is going to start cooling off. And this craft is a resounding success, believe it or not. Uh, it's only going to smash into the center of Jewel and get destroyed by the Kraken, but this is a, su a success. So let's take a look at what that crash would look like near the end. So here we are. We are around 1,500 meters up, and we you can see here how the world starts to go really wonky really quickly. And there is another, I forgot which moon that is of Jewel and uh, underneath. I've, as we start to see through Jewel to the other side. So, and here we go. And... Boom! <laughs> I had to think for a second there. But there you go. Vessel is destroyed. Cannot autosave. We have reached Jewel, the, the center of Jewel, and a little beneath the center of Jewel to the center Kraken point. All right, so from our test there, we have devised this new method to actually push our glider jet <laughs> craft into orbit, uh, well, from orbit into the atmosphere of Jewel. And hopefully I have enough radiators, I decided to not go with the heat shields so this should make things a little bit more interesting uh, on the insertion uh that should be enough for my descent into madness here and this aircraft is pretty much the same core design oh that looks freaking awesome it's the same core design as the previous aircraft where i have the service bay the uh sas the rtgs uh, the the core, ev everything the satellite core I, I already mentioned that all all built in to the service bay and the service bay on the inside all those uh, the batteries are all shrouded also in radiators so everything is radiators upon radiators with radiators on top of the wings 
radiators on the edges of the wings, radiators every freaking where. And on the back, you see I have an electronic propeller that comes from Fire Spitter. This allows me to have a uh, propeller that will push me forward. I actually can get some thrust on a planet that has no atmosphere, well, no oxygen for a jet to burn. An uh, propeller, electronic propeller would be the way to go. So this craft is pretty much just a heat uh, radiator shrouded design that <laughs> looks really freaking cool if you ask me I love that design so this thing needs to dive in so let's jump forward a bit and dive this on into the atmosphere all right so here we are diving into jewel and once I turned on the temperature overlay you can see things were starting to heat up. The tail fins were my main concern because tail fins I've always had trouble with exploding. So this is actually my first try with this aircraft going in and I was really, really concerned that I did not have enough cooling on those tail fins. But I kind of need those tail fins, otherwise your craft would kind of go out of whack. So as this thing dives down, I paid very, very close attention to those tail fins. <laughs> now the center service bay is being adequate, adequately cooled. It's really hard to see what's going on because the re-entry effects. So you can't really see the overall heat. But as you can see there, I have a bit of overheating going on with my service bay. So everything in the core is starting to overheat. Now that was kind of kind of expected because I didn't have the heat shielding but I really just had to cross my fingers here and just take the plunge and watch that overheating like a hawk if need be I can waggle the craft side to side and that tends to dissipate some of the heat but not a lot but from here it's just crossing the fingers and hoping for the best <laughs> Now this high up, we uh, I, I really, part of me wanted to turn on, and you can see through here, it's really, you can't really see the parts of me, I figured that out later, but uh, I really wanted to turn on, we're going Mach 5.22, Mach 5.22, that's a little scary. Now I really wanted to turn on this propeller in reverse to slow myself down, but as you can see, the FS coolant was not, uh, there was no FS coolant being generated, so I had to wait until I got deeper into the atmosphere for the FS coolant to start to generate uh, for Fire Spitter. Now, more parts starting to overheat, as you can see here. My concerns were well-based because my it looked like the tail fins were starting to overheat along with some of the additional parts that I slapped on here. And things were getting a bit freaking hot. A bit hot. It's very concerning. So uh, I was really, really, really just hoping that things would not explode. But looking at, if you look really closely, you'll see that even though the temperature is going up for those parts, it's not going up fast enough to cause it to explode. And it's really kind of creeping upwards and still being radiated outwards. So right now, all we really needed to do was continue to dive down and hope that the atmosphere would slow us up enough to sit back and embrace the hypnocraft. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, it slow us up enough to actually cool everything off. And you see the parts are starting to light up everywhere. Things are getting a bit scary at this point. And just as they started, our speeds are slowly dropping under 5, Mach 5. And you start to see things start to wink off as they cool back down. That means that we have made it. These last two parts, last one part, needed to cool down. And once that happens, we are in the good. So the next part is all about how 
to master sustained flight on Jewel. Now keep in mind we have one engine that can do it for us. Uh, there's a second one, but that's meant for a helicopter. So I'm using this electric propeller from Fire Spitter uh, with a reverse thrust. It has another one, but I wanted the one that folded so I can tuck it inside of that heat shielding. Well, not heat shielding, inside of those those radiators so that way it won't get a directly affected with the heat. But we will have to wait to deploy that until we're going much much slower and much further down and generating FS coolant. All right, here we are. We are dropping all of our entry effects. You can see our craft has cooled back down rather quickly after breaking through. Those radiators are definitely doing the trick for us. And we are back to a nice gentle calm red. So as we have our little red fireball in Jewel, it looks like uh, right now we are very well balanced, diving straight on in. And uh, we really just, at this point, need to just wait it out. But, of course, I'm not one for waiting. And this happens. That's right. I mess with the controls. <laughs> and I lose all control of this craft. But fear not. I'm, I'm not new to this game when it comes to losing control of my aircrafts. It happens a lot for me. But what this does do is it slows me up enough so that way I can actually engage my propeller. I just kind of lose track on where my prograde was and uh, all that spinning. But at least it gives you a really cool view of what this aircraft looks like with all that spinning. But... From here, it's all about getting that propeller deployed, and uh, as you can see, the FS coolant is now is now generating since we're in the atmosphere, and cutting this propeller on and reverse thrust. Now, for some reason, it didn't want to stage properly, so I just had to go in there and manually activate it. And this is where I have the biggest goof up moment of my life. I tend to not think things through all the time and I was running this propeller for quite some time before I realized that hey I never throttled the propeller up to actually generate thrust so yeah let's fast forward to the point of where I was not exactly being an idiot so here's our aircraft in all of its grandeur without the temperature overlay uh, right now we're still kind of gliding. I think in a few seconds here I actually realized that I was not throttled up. <laughs> which is which is kind of a major oversight uh, on my behalf. I was so excited that I was in the atmosphere and gliding. And there you go. Hey, engines on throw on full, but of course I don't have the electrical charge to do that or the stability at the point. But I was so excited at the fact that I was actually gliding on Jewel, not really flying at that point, that uh, I had completely forgotten to do that. I, I at least got the aircraft balanced out in all that time. But from here, I was able to actually stabilize the aircraft, add some actual thrust to it, so that way it could fly rather than just coast its way down to oblivion. And now we actually have the beginnings of sustain sustainable flight on Jewel. Now, this is not quite sustainable fully because that electrical charge is dropping faster than I anticipated it to drop, but uh, with enough patience and enough flying skill, you could definitely get this thing going long term. You just have to dive down, uh, climb up and dive down with a little power a little power behind it so it would kind of go between gliding a free glide and a powered thrust flight so it would definitely work but it would take some patience and as you can see here the lift on jewel is is quite something <laughs> you need a lot bigger wings than what i have on here right now unfortunately i did not go with really big wings thinking i had to keep them small and I kind of paid for that in the long run. But as you can see here, 
our pro grade is actually climbing upwards, which means we're getting closer to actual stable flight on Joule. Once we are getting more, uh, once we have our vertical speed in the positives, like right now you can see in Kerbal Engineer, our vertical speed is negative 20. We need that to at least be able to climb into the positives for a few for a few moments, so that way we can at least at least get a taste of sustainable flight on Jewel, not just a slow slowed down crash <laughs> like we are currently doing. Right now, we aren't really going very fast, but at the same time, that plummet is still a plummet, and it doesn't take much impact to, to destroy your craft on Jewel. And so we, we are getting it closer. It definitely could have, could have used a few more RTGs to generate power for this motor. Uh, also, a maybe a bigger propeller blades to uh, generate a bit more control thrust. And here we go. We are almost there. We are almost there. It is so close. It is so close. It is so freaking close. And it dives back down. Okay. So it just means we got a, a little bit more power, angle it up a bit more. And if we can get into the positive vertical speeds, then we can at least get something out of this. Come on. It was such a moment right here. Uh, my brain was freaking out because the craft at this point is barely stable. At trying to maintain that angle there's just not enough thrust is generating and as you can see here it is very 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 close and in order to do this we'd have to push the aircraft a lot more but with it creeping with the ability to creep into the positive vertical speeds it shows that we would be able to actually gain some altitude and slow down our descent as much as possible but as you can see here we don't have the electrical charge to maintain it but this definitely this design shows that it is possible it is possible to make it happen with a bit more powerful RTGs or a bit more powerful engine on the back there maybe a propeller blade um, something of the like but this definitely could work so this aircraft can sustain itself it can sustain its flight it, it's very tricky, but it can do it. So I'm rather excited about this. I was dancing around the room. It's, it's a rather horrifying thought to think about me dancing around the room. But this aircraft has made it possible. We are flying on Jewel with a powered propeller. Ah, I can't believe that worked. If you'd like to see, hit that like button, drop me in the comment, let me know what you think. Join our heavenly family, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. This is your boy Jatwa and I'm out. Peace. Oh, let me go, 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 let me go! No, 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 that didn't work at all! Whoa! Let's take that. 527!